Hi, today we're talking to Jane Roper, author of the memoir Double Time. Jane Roper is the author of a novel called Eden Lake and a memoir, Double Time. She has an MFA in fiction from the Iowa Writers' Workshop, and her work has appeared in many places, including the Huffington Post and Salon.com. She was a mum blogger for five years at Babbel.com, and she blogs now at JaneRoper.com. So Jane, thank you very much for coming today. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Um, we have a cocktail, which we're actually going to do first of all. And inspired by Double Time, we have named it Twice As Nice. Oh, God. <laughs> and it, it is, as the mother of six-year-old twins, you need lots of energy. So what we've got in here is, it's actually a super fruit cocktail. Mm. It's watermelon and fresh ginger nice. and lime. Which is just Ooh, I love good ginger. for our brains. I adore it. Yeah, good for our energy. So if you would like to, um, okay, pour some of that. All right. You can do just a tiny bit if you like. Because, is that good? Yeah, I'll try that, okay. and then All right. because we don't know how the champagne is going to fizz up. Right. Oh yes, okay. that's true. That can be that can be dicey. We right. might end up with it. I'll, do, I'll go very slowly here. Ooh, Ooh lovely. Ah, perfect. There we go. Okay, there and there's a lime wedge okay. for you, a lime wedge for me. and a lime wedge for me, and let's just see. Cheers. Cheers, chin chin. Pink. Let's see how it is. Mmm, mm, yum. Mm. I like that. Oh, it's nice. It's yeah. not sweet no, at it's, all. It's it's a nice, dry, refreshing. It's it good. is. So, um, double time your memoir. Mm -hmm. One of the first things that I loved about it was how funny it is. Okay. And my first question is, did you study writing humor? Because the, your comic timing is, is really so good. Is that something you. you do consciously or? You know, it's funny. No, I, n I never studied it um, at all. Uh, but it's funny when I, oh, so when I was studying fiction at mm. the Iowa Writers Workshop, you know, I felt like everybody was writing these very earnest, sincere, serious stories, and I felt the need to do the same. But then on the side, I would write these little things, like I, I had to write, um, or I volunteered to write the invitation to our little graduation ceremony, and I made it a spoof, basically, of the, the classic literary short story, workshop short story, and everyone loved it. I got more positive response to that than I ever got to one of my short stories. Oh, interesting. And it was like, you're so, you know, you write funny really well. You should do more of that. Oh. And my husband too, he, you know, he would say, you, you should write the way you write in your emails because you write these yes. very funny, witty emails. Right, right. So it sort of, I, I started exploring that more. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I think I just through practice have gotten better at it. But I love hearing, I mean, I'm glad you thought it was yeah. funny. So I began underlining the funny part, oh, and yeah. then I gave up. I just gave up because, I mean, the book is, is so marked up. It's just, you know, just, <laughs> yeah. it began to be ridiculous. Oh. So um, the other thing that was so sweet about this, you know, I know your twins are six, yes. and my kids are 20 and 16. So this was a wonderful trip back to those days. It really was like being okay. immersed back in that time when you remember the baby smells and the soft cheek and, yeah. and those kisses. Yes, you oh, know, baby those kisses, kisses are, the, are just, the best. Yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> when you were writing this, because you, you began writing it three years after, when they were three, yes. right? So mm -hmm. it was three years. So were yeah. all those memories really fresh? Did going back into them remind you of it or was it still were you still in that you know it it's funny i was surprised when i began to write how far away they felt oh. um so i did go back quite a bit and i i found myself doing almost this um deep memory um exploring and i was surprised mm. at when so i would go back and look at my old blog posts and i had those sort of as research mm. and i was amazed that i could look at the blog post and then say okay I'm gonna close my eyes here, and I'm gonna go back even deeper. And I found myself remembering things that I hadn't um, sort of consciously every day re yes. remembered, and I yeah. could go back and really think back to, to more of those sensations. And it was bittersweet too. I was going to know? say, what was the effect? Yeah, it, it made me really miss yeah. miss those days. And at the same time, I was so grateful. I, I don't know if you've found this, but I find I'm having 
things are getting more and more interesting in a way. You know, kids are a oh, lot more sure. interesting than babies. Yes. And yeah. I'm sure like yeah. as you, you know, you have young adults, you know, teenager and young adults now, you know, it, it does, it gets, it's fascinating, it gets more complex. Yes, and, and, as, and what they don't tell you about the teenage years is how funny and how creative and how clever and how yeah. the up, you only ever hear about the bad things. Right, right. But there yeah. really is, there's a payoff. I think there's a payoff in all of this parenting. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always that difficulty and the, the joy and yes. the difficulty. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I love six. I, yeah, they're, do they, Yeah, oh gosh, yeah, yeah they're sweet. so curious and, yeah. and they are creative and yet yeah. they still have these little moments of babyhood. Our girls still say hostable instead of hospital. Mm. You know? Aww, <laughs> so, that's so sweet. Yeah, I My daughter it. used to say Draclia. Draclia. Instead of Dracula. No, love it. I That's know. That's great. I love it. And I don't want to correct them. Because no, I want no. I want them to hang I want to hang <laughs> on to that. I used to write things down but not as much as I wish I had. Yeah. And so when yeah. I read this, I I found myself feeling a tiny bit jelly. Yeah. I thought, how great to have that detailed a mm -hmm. record of those years. Yeah. yeah. I, I fictionalized mine and so it was in short stories. Right. But not yeah, the same detail, the same detail yeah. and it's the detail in this that really you know my first question when I was reading it is okay she had twins mm -hmm. how did your experience compare with mine yeah and so I was reading along and I was sort of absorbing your um, you know your response to yeah. tell us about that first response when you found out that you had you were pregnant with twins oh gosh you know I, it was I think the the most immediate immediate was Wow, cool. And then, but that was followed, you know, right on the heels of that came, oh, oh my God, yeah. like, you know, fear, terror, I don't think I can handle this. And that, you know, the feeling that this isn't me, this isn't, I oh, never had a sudden vision. immersion into yeah. big motherhood. Yeah, yes, exactly. As opposed to one little manageable I, baby. Yeah, I always had this this vision of I would sort of, you know, creep into motherhood, you know, because yeah. I was very, you know, felt very independent. Yeah. and. So, yeah, for it suddenly to go from this vision of like, yeah, one baby, I can Drenched gradually get used to this, yeah, oh my God, <laughs> you know, uber motherhood. Yes, right, I, oh, right. It was a, yeah, it was a big shock. Yeah, I, didn't I could feel completely prepared. see that. So reading your experience, I, I think it would be very helpful to parents of multiples. And mm -hmm. also you give quite a few tips for things you would do differently, yes. which I think is very helpful. Yes. Yeah. Um, and there was one point where you were writing a description. It, I think I was maybe 20, 25 pages in, and it was mm -hmm. a description of the day and what you had to go through. And it was the first time I suddenly went, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. The, the, that is just, how? Yeah, you I know? don't know. Amazing. Yeah, it was, you know what was funny though? I, I think there was a, uh, almost like an adrenaline thing, oh. you know, where you just mm -hmm. sort of, you're, in the mm -hmm. zone, We're in the baby <laughs> zone. No yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one of the questions people ask most often, I think, to mothers of twins, or the things they say, is, I don't know how you do it. Mm. And the answer is, well, I just do. I yeah, have, no, have choice. no choice. And right. you, you know, you would do the same thing. You yeah. just do it. And you, you put your head down and you get through it. And there was almost, you know, I feel like there was almost a sense, a, a zen-like quality of, well, this is what we have to do, and yes. we will do it, and we yes. will be tired. Yeah. And there was and no point in resisting. Right. Or thinking those right. thoughts that make it harder. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's not like we can say, okay, well, you know, back up. I decided I, you know, I'm just going to keep one of them. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> you know? Of course. Yeah. yeah. You have to yeah. just do it. They're six now. They're six now. Yep. How about... You know, there were some very interesting things in here, which I think also apply to parents of not just twins. You know, if you yeah. have two children, you're concerned yeah. about how the interplay between them, how they're developing. Yeah. How, tell us a little bit about where they are now in terms of their individuation. Is that a word? I don't I, know yeah, I think is. it is. Is it? I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you know, as they've as they've gotten older, they've definitely they're they've always had very different personalities. But they've certainly, that has become clearer and clearer over time. Um, they have complementary personalities in some mm. ways, mm -hmm. but it's still very difficult for them. And um, so, as, as you know, last summer, uh, Cleo, one of our girls, was diagnosed with leukemia. Yeah. And I feel like since then, it, because of that, and because now their experiences are so different, mm -hmm. and because suddenly they've been spending so much time, whereas before they were really living their lives very much in parallel, mm -hmm. doing the same things, you know, mostly 
having both of us, you know, both my husband and I there with them at the same time or, or them each doing similar activities and going mm. the same places. All of a sudden now their experiences have diverged sharply yes and it was very sudden and I think that's been a difficult um, that's been a difficult transition because Has it polarized them they fight more they do that's for sure and there's been yeah. more jealousy yeah because one's yeah. jealous of the attention the yeah. other is getting yep and yeah. then one yeah. and then Cleo will be jealous because Elsa gets to do things that she, she doesn't, doesn't get, get to do, do spending yeah. more time at school yeah. um, now are you on maintenance now Have we're just moving that? into maintenance yeah so, so does, the, yeah it's a two-year course of treatment for mm -hmm. childhood leukemia or the type of leukemia she has and so we're just finishing up the first year and going into the second year, which is maintenance, so it's easier. It is easier. Yeah, it, yes, and she should start to get her hair back. Yeah. And, and yeah. Because one of the things that's fascinating about, I think, you as a writer at this point in time is mm -hmm. that you seem very much like a, a product of your five years mummy blogging. Mm -hmm. um, you mm -hmm. know, you're almost like classic writer training yeah. meets the modern world. Yeah. And what I noticed with your um, people who respond to your books on Amazon and Goodreads is that mm -hmm. a lot of them are readers of your blog. Yes. And the way they respond to the book suggests that they're not necessarily book readers. Yeah, I think that's true. I think, yeah, I think some of them are are reading because of the blog. Um, and I would, what I'd like to, you know, what I love hearing from them is that the experience of reading the book while it's resonant of the blog mm -hmm. and they feel like they come to it knowing a bit more about my family and about me. Second screen material. Y yeah. Like your book. This yeah. is the second screen even though... Yeah. So it's flipped. <laughs> right. You know, the book is now the second screen material yeah. where they're coming for the backup to the blog. Exactly. Right. But they'll yeah. say it, do it does feel like a different experience and a different, you know, it, it's... I'll, although I'd certainly draw on material and style from the blog, there's very little that's plucked. Yeah, they don't. Directly. They're not um, duplicating material yeah, no, at all. No, no, no. It's no, not. It's no. not the blog. You know, copied onto no. paper and. But bounced. these. So these readers who are going to your blog, do they come every day or twice a week or how often do they? I come? only. You know, these days I'm only writing once or twice a week. So they'll come. Yeah, usually they'll read. You know, whenever I post. But I also have a really active relationship with readers on Facebook. So I'm. I'm very active there, and okay. so I have that so people additional can come interaction. And talk to you on Facebook yeah. and on Twitter. You're on Twitter. And on Twitter, yeah, right. Yep. But before we get into Twitter, it yeah. struck me that it's almost gone back to the time of Dickens when he was writing those yeah. serials. Yep. And people check into your blog to find out what the latest is. What happens is. next? Yes, it's the serialization. That's a, yeah. I never thought of that, but that's true. So you're also on Twitter. I am. Mm -hmm. And tell me what it is you like about Twitter as a writer. What you find it does for you. Yeah, I think the the biggest thing for me on Twitter has been connecting with other writers and including some that um, I, I've never met, but I feel like they're friends mm -hmm. and I feel like I look out for their books and I can comment on their books. Uh, I find that the support between writers on Twitter is great. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll pop, you know, when one of us has a book coming out, we'll share that with each other's followers. Right. So um, you don't get hate. I know someone no. recently just stopped their um, Twitter account because of yeah. haters. I'm not famous enough for that. I think, <laughs> is that what you it know, is? I think you, it's yeah, fame. I think it's fame. I think if you were, if you're big, because then people stop thinking of you as a person. You know, I feel very fortunate that I'm not in a place where people really see me, you know, they see me as a person. So they, yeah. they're not hateful. And uh, every once in a while you get somebody who's a little rude or Snarky. critical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but I, that's the you know, the that's problem not bad the if it's internet. once in a while. Yeah, no, okay. yeah, right, because you yeah. can tune it out and be like, I'm not going to take this personally. This person's just sort of on the fringe yeah. and, and maybe they're having a bad day. So then I do have to ask you that question, how do you fit it all in? How do you, how do you good engage with people on Facebook and tweet and write and look after six-year-old kids and be, and work? And work, yeah, I, I guess I drink a lot of coffee. Um, I... Do you I, get I, up very early? No, I don't. No. Do you no. go to bed very late? No. No. I don't. I, no. I think I'm just sort of, I, I don't know. I try to be very productive and I try to um, not get too distracted. I try to parcel out my day and, and mm. say like, this is writing time. Mm. This is social media time. Mm. This is work time. Mm. And there's sometimes when one falls through the cracks. Mm. And oftentimes, you know, my, my work work, my paying work, which mm. is advertising, 
really has to take priority sure. because yeah. that's yeah. you know you have to pay the bills putting food on the table yeah. right um, and other things will will slip a bit but what's nice is my my life has a certain ebb and flow to it you know my work mm. yes and projects flows. end and yeah, yes. yeah so there's, there's a nice rhythm there's space mm. yeah mm. and I rely on a um, an app that every writer should have called Freedom. Freedom. Yes. yes. Do you use I Freedom had, also? I don't. I don't. Yeah, it's the best. I sure. Yeah. It just turns off your internet connection for a set period of time and you cannot, you know, re-enable it. So I'll say, you know, I think the default is 45 minutes when is you it? turn it on and say, okay, yep. Good I'm gonna, enough. Good yep, enough. You I can, can get work. something done in that time. Yep. And then I can re- often I'll say, oh, I, I can keep Go going. Again. Go, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. I love it. So the other big part of, of this book is depression, dealing with yeah. depression. Mm -hmm. And um, you have a couple of great strategies in here. You call it mild depression, meaning that you were not suicidal. Yes. And you knew that you would not be, that that was not a thing for you. Somehow, yeah. You... Somehow I knew that. Um, I, I've talked since talked to a, a psychiatrist friend who said I was passively suicidal because I didn't... And I've heard this from other um, folks with depression as well. They, you don't want to kill yourself. You just want to cease to exist. And you want the pain to go away. Yeah, yeah. You just sort of wish I, I was not. I wish I was not there. And I, yeah. I think for me, I, I was never so despairing that I felt like I, I could do something like that to my and that's, family. That's gone. That's yeah. gone from yeah. you now. Well, I'm managing yeah. it. Yeah, I, I'm managing my depression with, with medication. Yeah, and I'm not sure I would say it was mild. I mean, maybe I say oh, that. but do, It does it say. Was, I wondered if that was... Yeah, was I mean, it I was... varying... It, it varied. I I'd had mild depression before, you know, earlier. But what, what happens in the course of the book and what I talk about in the, in the course of the book mm. is definitely more serious. I mean, yeah, I, I suppose... Compared to some people, it would be considered mild. Right. Well, the other thing that I, this book was useful in so many different ways, I felt, mm -hmm. apart from making us laugh and giving parents tips, not just mothers of twins or, or multiples, I thought that your strategies, I know, did you? <laughs> it fell out. You could pop it in. Yeah, I, I thought the that. strategies for dealing with depression were were really significantly mm -hmm. useful and that and people ought to know about that so yeah. what would you say are your sort of top three or top five well and you know some of these I are courtesy of my husband because he's oh. so supportive and one of the things he would say was just treat yourself like you're sick yeah not by which he didn't mean you know feel sorry for yourself and lie around in bed right. but well if you can help it <laughs> but yeah. try not to feel like you have to always be at the top of your game. It's okay to, you know, to say to some social obligations or work obligations, I I just can't. So is this especially for you because you're hard on yourself? Because you yeah. drive yourself? I do. Yeah. yeah. And I think for me it's it's always hard to let go yeah. and, and be less than yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. So right. I think that's it. I think asking for help is important. Um you, you know, conf whether you feel comfortable telling you know, you don't necessarily need to tell everyone you know that you're depressed, but if you find a few close friends that you can really confide in and say, So don't keep it to yourself. Yeah, I don't think there's there's any reason to keep it to yourself. And you use the phrase coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Which I thought was, yeah. you know, in this day and age, I think it's something that everybody knows someone. Mm -hmm. And and also, you know, hormones can do very funny oh, things God, yeah. Yeah. to brain chemistry. Yeah, And absolutely. so for there to be a stigma around mm -hmm. something like that, it's it's not helpful. It's not yeah. useful yeah. in any way. Yeah. But there were two things that you especially mentioned that made me chuckle, which was yeah. one that sort of shook you out of your blues if, yeah if that's a good word for it yeah one was the daily show yeah yeah so 30 minutes of canned comedy yeah literally made an instant change in your brain yeah. chemistry yeah i could laughter i was lucky because i could still see humor okay. and what was interesting to me is <laughs> when i would watch something like the daily show or a stupid comedy movie you know like, let's put on caddyshack and watch some dumb right. movie um I would end up laughing harder than I normally would. It was almost this desperate laughter. I think it was a bit of a release. Yeah, yeah. yeah and my husband yeah. would be looking at me like, hmm, "What's going? You know, you're, you're. This is funny, but it's not that funny. But it's, yeah. but it just feels so good to laugh. Yes, and, and you know, and you're so grateful that you can still do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. like, yeah, you sort of cling to it. And my kids, you know, I, I write about the fact that I could still 
take some pleasure in my girls and in the funny and moments. Duty of also. Oh yes, yes. The, the fact were... that you had to get up and get going, and yeah. sometimes that on its own would make you feel not as bad. Yeah, because it, right, I I, ha I knew I had to get up, I had to change a diaper here and there, I right. had to feed my children. So yeah, and I think having to do that, I, th I liken it in the book to jumping into a, a cold lake. Yes. You know, you it, oh, it's the worst feeling in the world to have to, uh, for me anyway, I'm such a wimp about jumping into cold <laughs> water. But then once you get in, it's not that bad, right? right? You get used to it. And so, yeah, I think my kids were very much right. my salvation. Right. And ways. so to know that um, depression feeds on inactivity. Yes, you know, any does. kind of motion, yeah. asking for help. And then the, yeah. the last thing was going to the fairground. Yeah. Which I just, yeah. I thought that was the most delightful mm -hmm. scene. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, <laughs> going on the, we were in the Jersey Shore and, and going on the, it was the, the galleon, I think, which is the, um, you know, that makes the, your stomach. Yeah, it makes your yeah. stomach, right. You're up on the, you know, on the high, yeah. uh, you feel like you're about to flip over or fall out, you know, the, the boat. And um, yeah, being on that, it was like, it gave my body a physical sort of jolt. It literally, yes. Yeah, it, it, I was like, oh, this is how shock therapy works. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if I should say that, but that's right. exactly what I thought, that right. that must be what it's like. Yeah. So to get on that galleon, was mm -hmm. that hard? Not really. No. I think I had a, f you know, I, the thing with depression, in me anyway, is this, you know, sense of indifference. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I don't really care. Okay, Nothing's so going to feel, I could go, I could go. not go. Uh, but it, it was with I went with my brother in this case. My brother and I have always had fun going on rides. And, mm. You know, so a lot it was of a fun. Habit. Yes. Yeah. So I, you know, we yeah, just went, and I think I, th I think I thought maybe this will feel good. Yeah. Because it's sensory, right? It's not a mental thing. Right. It's not it's something a physio I physiological yeah. change. And it was yeah. and it was easy. I didn't have to put forth any effort. No. Just um, sit there. Just sit there. <laughs> and, be yeah. sh and be shocked. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It felt great. Where would the first place be for someone to go and ask for help? What would they do? Go to their doctor? I think, yeah, I think talking to your primary care physician is a great is a great place to go um, when you're really ready to... to right. um, oh, God, I almost said pull the trigger. That's a terrible <laughs> metaphor. <laughs> no, you don't mean <laughs> that. You don't. Yeah, no. no, no. To, well, to pull the trigger on some action. Yes, To right. take some action. Yeah, and, exactly. Because your primary care doctor should, if they're good, you know, mm -hmm. they should be able to recognize it, depression and maybe refer you. You know, I think I think going to a psychiatrist next or first is better. Um, it is a good next step rather than having your primary care doctor prescribe. Okay. Um, just because so they get a referral from get them a referral to, to a psychiatrist. To a specialist. Yeah, yeah. Just because okay. they're going to have a little more sense, I think. I mean, I'm not a doctor. No, but for sure. This it, is from your experience. Yeah, from my course. experience, they have a, a slightly better sense of the subtleties of depression and maybe which medications might be right for your particular, you know, symptoms, your particular, um, you know, everything, right. physiology. That, yeah. That's one more thing that was really interesting was that you had to manage your own care mm -hmm. as the cocktail of meds yeah. was changing. Yes. Um, my father experienced this with Alzheimer's, uh -huh. that it's, it's medicine is an art. It is. You know, it's oh, yeah. not a science where they just give you one thing. So you have no. to be prepared to say, this is not really working. Yeah. And, Give me something different. What else is there? Yeah, you have to be yeah. really tuned in yeah. to yourself. Yeah, which your, is yeah. hard if you haven't got much energy at that time. But yes. worth it. <laughs> yeah. But oh, worth God, it. absolutely. So, so this, I really think, is so tremendously useful in so many ways, as well as being something that will really make you laugh and take you back to the sweetness of babies mm -hmm. if Thank you're an you. old mother like me. Um, <laughs> and so I recommend it. Go out and get it. Thank you so much Thank for you. coming today. It was Thank wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks. It was great talking to you. See you next time.